Hello YouTube, I welcome you to this fine day and this is my Feather the Redeemed Historic Brawl decklist. This deck focuses around Feather the Redeemed as a commander and tries to protect her and win essentially with a big Voltron flyer. The way we achieve this is by having multiple cards in the deck that can just make Feather indestructible for really cheap. The worst cards are the non instant or sorcery ones like Resolute Watchdog or the Elsa of Life's Bounty, and Ikoria brought a sweet new addition with Fighters 1 as well. And uh, then we are just going to smack face with this lovely lady. The rest of the deck supports the strategy by either having creatures that are also in snow sorceries like Shepherd of the Flock, have uh, a hate peer aspect to them, Tithe Taker or Cotley Honor Guard, because we don't really have ETB effects. This can ju just just shut down a lot of decks in the format. Or we have creatures that want to be buffed or um, are uh, quite nice to have around when you have a, a lot of instant sorcery. So Kill and Fiend can just kill the opponent in one turn. Red or Arcanist can get stuff back from the graveyard. So you can, if you have an instant sorcery in the grave, you cast something with the Arcanist from the grave and instead of it going to exile, you can put it into exile with Feather and then it actually goes back to your hand. So you can recur, recur your um, instant sorcery that if you have used pre-Feather essentially. And yeah, I don't think there is much more about to say about this deck. Oh, and also Go for the Blood is a sweet, sweet new addition from Ikoria because any kind of removal that also targets your own feather is really insane because it can just come back and back and back. The only other card that previously did this effectively um, or efficiently I'd rather say uh, was Reckless Rage and if you have ever played against a feather deck and they're just Reckless Raging you each turn it's just backbreaking. Um, we are a bit low on lands and we pretty much run all the tap lands in the deck I really don't want to run them, but Feather is... It has a very, very strict mana requirement, and so does the rest of the deck, so... It's not necessarily evil, I guess. Anyways, let's jump into some gameplay, shall we? Our opponent will be Kinnon Bonus Prodigy. And I believe this will be a very, very tough matchup. Um, because Kinnon is simply one of the absolute best historic brawl commanders out there. I also have a video on him. Uh, check it out. But I think this is a key to our access here. We have removal. Uh, we have aggressive drops. We start. We have Mox Amber. So all in all, seems like a great start. Let's hope they don't open with a Mox Amber and a one drop mana drop themselves. Okay. Um, let's go with the Arcanist. And next turn, if they play Kinnon into mana drop. Oh no, just Kinnon. Okay, perfect. So we're going to infuriate the Arcanist. Go for the blood. Kill the Kinnon. And I'm not sure... Okay, they surrendered. Because we can remove their cards over and over again. Uh, we wouldn't have grabbed anything from the graveyard. We would have feathered and then fight feather onto something, get the fight back into the hand and then buff something up in the next attack to... Um, just annihilate them. GG. Okay, our opponent is bringing Kethis, the Hidden Hand, to the table. Uh, started the recording a bit late. I believe Banishing Light is a fine card to have against Kethis. And God's Willing will certainly be annoying for them to deal with. Okay, they're all again twice already. Oh, three times. What were they searching for? Maybe just a good opening hand. <laughs> oh boy. Um, 
Yeah. Let's start with the guild, guild gate. And let's follow up with the Tokadiona guard and hopefully this will annoy them. They're going to drop Kethys. We are going to banish him like the Kethys. Seems like a great plan. And swing for one. So, sadly, we don't have an untapped land next turn to have the gods willing up. This is an untapped source. Here, so we are going to decline that. A feather and have the gods willing up. And maybe next turn we can start to pay for smothering tithe, but I doubt we will do because we have triumph fight something. Yeah. So we're are we going to reveal the gods willing to them? I yes. Just for the scry. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yep, land is fine. Okay. I think we are going to decline. So let's buff you up. Get you fighting. And This is a bit hard for them to deal with, I believe. Let's drop the outside as well and swing in. Okay. Yep, and they had enough because they don't seem to have removal for our bot state and we can just grind them out by killing the creatures. Good games. Huh. It says I'm ready, but apparently something is lagging. Oh, there we go. We note her. We note is a pretty cool commander in my opinion. Uh, so let's see. Yeah. Seems decent. Um, I'm not too worried about Winota killing our commander. We have indestructible available twice to be exact but we don't have a one drop or two drop but i think it's fine we will manage so tap land goes first obviously and let's see where we go from here also tap land a man of culture i see and yeah the cat coming out so I'm probably just going to drop feather here because if they remove feather it will really slow them down and if they don't remove feather which is highly likely I'm absolutely fine with that That seems quite annoying. I think I will grab the red source. And end the turn. Will they play Winota? Okay, excellence binding. Swift blade, okay. So I think in response. Oh no. We don't need to do something in response. Um, so I'm just going to gain the life from the shelter uh, from the uh, from the healing grace, so let's see. Prevent the next three damage that would be dealt to any target this turn by a source of your choice. So I'm going to target myself and this source is the cat, right? 
Whoops. Um, I forgot that I should target the feather to gain more life. Oh, the card is gone. Whoops. Okay, so Winoda doesn't come down yet. And then says to Blade, Chandra. Find your fires of passion within. Let's just scry one more time. Yeah, Tithe Taker seems like a nice target. Just because it is a creature. So let's scry one more time. what our opponent is going to do. Legion's landing and they're going to flip it immediately. Can respect that. Get him, yep, Winoda triggers a bunch of times. Let's make you indestructible. That's, uh, that's one turn too late. But I will take it, I guess. Even. So yeah, if we targeted correctly with the race, it would have been fine, but this is just horrendous, I guess. Let's see. Cat. Turn that into a human. And... Yeah, I think this is probably GG. They have locked out us, locked us out quite nicely with the dreadful apathy here. And good game. Good game. <clears throat> what is? Let's see. Nope. This seems a bit problematic. <laughs> no locks and good game. On to the next one. Our next opponent is Nicol Bolas, the Dragon God. And I think we have to bin this hand. Not sure. No, how good Hushbringer is against them. Tithe Taker seems good. Uh, maybe I want to draw one more land, but we don't have protection for that feather as well. But uh, it's Mulligan it. Yeah, that seems better. So they're going to play Mountain, Grim Initiate, interesting. Interesting, interesting. Usually those Rixus decks don't run a lot of creatures. We will see. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, another land. We are going to drop the... I think the Arcanist is quite decent here. That allows us to use... Take heart, I guess.
don't want to drop feather on three, I want to drop feather on four because of sheltering light to protect her. Of all when Gloves coming down. Yeah. I'm not sure how I, how I want to play the take heart here though. I'm fine with them removing some of our cards. So let's see if we kill this. This just grows and they have bigger but lesser threats. And this uh, is good in case of a shock because this has first strike and then our Akanis will just die without killing the Grim Initiate. I think this is better. And we currently don't have a trampler neighbor. So let's just do this and then play take hard. I know that's not coming work from the graveyard right now. But we can play it from the grave next turn. I think just a vindicator on top. So then we can just have the next turn. Make this into a 3-3 Vigilance Trample Attacker and have the Shuntering Light up as well. That's perfectly fine. Sure. No blocks. And we're going to drop the mountain, feather, heck with everybody. Yep, get that back to the hand. We are holding up the shelter and light, we could have done more damage. But I don't think we currently need the damage, as they are likely to be dead next turn anyways. The Dreadhold. Seems like an mass deck. Really flavorful though, with nickel bolas at the head. How much damage can we put out? Not really a ton, right? Just a lot of damage coming the way, but it's not quite lethal, I believe. Yes, we will block the reaver. Yeah, sure, let's do that. And... I mean, yeah, we can kill the Grim Initiate. Sure. Give that indestructible instead of the plus. Reason being is I want to scry. That probably does it. Sure. Let's see, how much damage is this? Okay, the Hagger everything on the Swift Blade indicator because that has double strike. And Going in with the team. Gain more life. And I'm holding up Shadow Ring Light as well, so. Pretty good. I believe that is lethal. Is it? Yeah, it's lethal. Good game. On to the next one. Our opponent will be the Izzet commander Riel the Everwise, a uh, pretty new commander from Icoria. Um, I'm not too keen on keeping this hand to be honest. 
but we are going second so we would see one more additional card and we have the reckoning claws for cycling mm. seems okay and we're just going to cast the Ambroth now or play the Ambroth. and uh, no reason not to wait with the mox ember in case they have spill pierce or something like that Mox Ember is here to have a 1 mana protection spell at turn 3. Essentially. Um, let's play a target that they have to remove. Can imagine that being quite frustrating to deal with. A go for the blood is getting cycled. And uh, there may or may not be a possibility of us winning, depending what we draw, but I think it's unlikely. So now we are not going to play Feather, because this pretty much shows us that we have a... Um, that they have counter spell up. We kind of want to get that counter spell out of their hands, so we're forcing it with the Gideon. So it is probably an essence scatter, because otherwise they would have waited a bit here. Do we just give it undestructible for its safety, or are we greedy with the lifelink? Huh. Kind of hard to tell. I think we're just giving it life link. Okay. Let's see, is our opponent going to aid their commander? Midnight clock, okay. And they're still holding up essence scatter. So we're just going to beat them with what we currently have in hand. Uh, I am considering uh, using the Prison Realm on the Midnight Clock. That seems like a decent idea. So how much damage do we have here? Think about this. We have 1, 2. It's no sorcery, so that's 5. That's 14 damage coming their way. Which is not enough, I believe. I think I can just go with the Prison Realm plan. Deny them mana. Oh, whoops. Uh, I mean, that wasn't really my intention. Because I was somehow thinking about um, Banishing Light instead of... This card, right here. I was thinking about this card. <laughs> I think we bought him it though. Okay. Gideon. Your light will giving light darkness. links. And. Do we want to keep up the shepherd or are we trying to play it risky? I think we are going to play it safe. Also, we can. If they play Riel. Uh, we can just bounce the prison realm um, back to our hand and replay it again. So they're forced to counter or something. Question is do we shepherd off the flock now for ma more mana efficiency? I think we do, even though we lose a bit of damage from the kiln fiend. Let's play that guy again. They really want to counter that, I guess. Nope. So, Riel. Hitting the bin. Fury 8 is exactly what we're looking for. And. Uh, let's get that lifelink. Prepare for battle! So 
so they're slowly dying to our creatures. And uh, I think we are just going to play the Elsator here. They may or may not want to counter that, I don't know. But it seems like they won't. Um, a flame sweep, letting this resolve and playing a flame sweep would be brutal, but this much tells us that they don't have flame sweep, otherwise, uh, otherwise they would have let the outside resolve and flame sweep us. We have the Gideon minus available to us, but I'm not sure if we want to kill the Gideon. And that is a good game, so they don't have anything against us like that uh, to stop us, really. And yeah, good game. Angel versus Angel. Who will be the better Angel? Okay, so this already seems like a nice start. We have a in an instant that draws us a card. I think I want to start up with the tap land and see where I go from here. An untapped source would be quite nice in the next two turns. Just anything really. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, how do we play this? I think I want the indicator on the battlefield first. I also want to drop outside of life's bounty um, next turn. And then when I draw my fourth land, I want to drop feather and have the protection from outside up for feather. Bronze side lion. It's kind of indestructible to me. Let's cycle breaking claws. Do we cycle it? That is the question. I think we do. Okay, uh, I believe one more white source is appropriate. No attacks. Chromatic Lantern and they will swing in for three. No, they won't. So how likely is it are they like will they have protection? That's the old deciding turn, but I think they will maybe just be greedy and drop Rian. So let's just play Feather. Let's gamble a bit. They can't remove Feather. Um, Yep, they're playing Rian, and we are in a really nice spot here. Because we have the indestructible spell in hand, we have the draw engines in hand. Overall, really nice. Okay. We're just going to draw our whole deck, maybe. I think I will start with the Kiln Fiend, though. And. Let's swing with the swift blade. I don't think they will block this. They are. So we are going to. Yeah, let's integrity intervention our swift blade. They want to put it on Rian, I guess. Yeah. That seems fair. And now they can give Rian indestructible whenever they want. And let's end the turn. So we're going to put a stop in their second main phase because it other says at the beginning of the end step. So if we're already in the end step and we cast something, it comes back at our next end step. So this is the reason why we're putting the stop on second main here. 
Don't think they will attack though. So let's draw a card with feather. Yeah. In an ideal world, we want to I will start to get a trample effect for the kiln feed. Or a prison realm that does the trick as well. Oh, there is the trample effect for the kiln fiend. Oh, but I think I will just prison realm the Rian. That also removes the bronze eyed lion from the Rian. And it will be gone for good. And I will keep up the sheltering light. Oh, fight as one is. Yes, yeah, seems like a better sheltering light because human, non human. Yeah. Let's do it. Also gives plus. And we're not going to attack with the Kiln Fiend, because this will be really valuable. Gilded Goose is dying. Yep. And let's hit that auto pass. So. Don't think I'm afraid of board wipes right now, but they would be annoying. But I also can't think of if... Oh yeah, they're in white. Oh yeah, there is a board wipe. We are going to sheltering light our feather. Now, can we kill them if we sheltering light our kiln fiend? I don't think so. So let's sheltering light the feather. And I don't think I want the fighters one now. Oh well, maybe. I do have Tithe Taker in hand. Let's see. Cast Lambreth hitting the battlefield tapped. Healing Grace. Good game. Okay. Uh, let's see. Start with an integrity here. Just go face. Mm. We want to show them the Bargin. I don't think so, so we're going to show them the Limrock Knight. Yeah, you go back to our hand again, please. And Defiant Strike to top it all off. Swing for 8 in the air. And every turn returns to our hand, so we are going to drop the Healing Grace, most likely. And we are going to drop the Tithe Taker, because this is not a matchup where our stuff gets countered. They mostly play on their turn, so it's not that effective. Ravager Worm, coming down. Probably will kill our... Uh, maybe fight, but the likelihood is that they are just going to kill a land is higher. Because they know we have the Shade Green Light. So what is it going to be? You know, um, yeah, this could. I think the stone quarry is the best pick here. Oh no, the the only option is cast Lambreth, Yeah. Yeah, and we are going to make that indestructible. Uh, maybe later. Um. There you go. 
Anyways, so do we feel the need to have the fight ability in hand? Don't think so. So, yeah, let's see. Burning tree emissary. And let's just go face after that. Can we kill them? That is the question. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No. Okay, my turn. So let's see. Um. Yeah, let's go with the good old beating in the air. Yep. And again, let's draw a card. Yep. Let's go even harder. And yeah, I think we can show them the sheltering light. No. The bargain, I mean. So let's do that, and we can play the outside of life bounty as well. Okay. Decent turn, I like it. Everything comes back to hand. And we have the option of being to fight strike or something else next turn. Quad Squad Crasher coming in with haste. Doesn't seem too... too nice of them. Okay. Is there any way for them to get more life? Because currently this is exact lethal. Nope. So... We can kill them. Great. So they're going to swing with the team. We are going to... Yeah, let's just... Wait, how much? That's 10. Yeah, so we block the highest non-trampler. Yeah. Block and get a bunch of life here. Yeah. So we live at for life. And that is the game. So one. Two. Three. It is indeed a very close game. And GG. Good game. So that was a pretty clutch lethal. Their board was quite threatening, but we managed to go through. So on to the next one. Okay, we are playing against Hero. Of Dominaria, the Teferi, and yeah, this seems like a great starting hand. Um, because Island of Obstruction is really annoying for commanders with that are planeswalkers. So we're going to drop that on the field right now. Also, it isn't really that big of a deal that we have a Taplan coming down next because we intend to drop Feather on uh, turn um, 4 anyways with an untapped source preferably and we have 3 indestructible effects waiting in our hand okay drone from Reeves and just a just the land would be fine and dandy Let's see. 
do we scry? Um, hard to say. I would love to. I'm not sure if the, if it's the correct choice. Yeah, let's just scry. Okay, don't need that. It's the land, please. It's kind of a land. So we're not playing Feather here. Um, because otherwise they can just... What do I boss? Okay, they're going to play Karn, Sign of Urza. I have faced worse I'll make use of that later. Yeah, um... So, let's give them the land. And, let's see. We just press around them. I think they're just going to drop the feather. And... Attack the Eidolon. Uh, with the Eidolon. And now we have a Fighters 1 available for all the feather. It's likely that they're going to minus to grab the Cleansing Nova. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Yep, minus one. Onto the feather. And I think this will be a bit annoying for them. So they grab the time wipe, which is fine. Okay, feather attacking. Let's see. And we keep it open like this because, in case they play Tef uh, Teferi and minus him. Okay, that is a problem indeed. Resolve. And let's put it into the command zone. Signet, and now we're start generating humans. Oh, perfect! It's looking beautiful because now we have a human and a non-human on the board, and we can protect both with fighters one against their board wipe. Okay, they're going to vanishing light our feather again. Unfortunate. Let's put it into the command zone again. So, a bit unfortunate that we have to do it like this. So, see, we can't play feather here. I think we're just at the mercy of Ugin essentially. And uh, let's cycle the raking laws then. Yeah. The double prison realm into. Uh, like the prison realm banishing light combo was really in. What put them back into the game? Because almost every other removal would have been useless against us. Hey, this is going to be really bad. They could have just exiled the prison realm and and the one one human. Yeah, I mean it happens. We had a decent draw against control, but these cards are really annoy against us. Okay. They're drawing, they're on tapping. You know what? I'm not done yet. And I believe this may or may not be game. 
Let's see what they have to say about our prison run. So let's play the Tithe Taker first. That way they have to pay one more. Okay, that's getting absorbed. Now we can prison around the Teferi. But I doubt it will do much because... Uh, they can just replay Teferi, so maybe it's better. Sure, you will play. So maybe they're just doing this better because... I don't know. I don't think we are. We can win from this position. Uh, they are going to ultimate the ferry in two turns, and that is game. GG. Our next opponent is going to be Varduk, and. I say this is a decent hand. We have indestructible hand protection, so at this point, just drawing one or two lands is fine. Start with the Sacred Foundry trapped. Planes, and we will probably cycle the Raking Claws. Let's see where we go from there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, now we just want to draw another land. Cycle this and perfect. So let's play this first and I think we can start by putting out a Cranko. Next turn we can play Feather and Infuriate on the Cranko, which is going to grow that Cranko pretty big and if they tap out oh yeah perfect nice, nice, nice. we can kill that so let's do that I guess yep infuriate the Cranko and hit the Sahili and we have protection up as well Pretty nice. And I believe we almost have lethal next turn, because that's 10 damage right here because of the Castle Ambreth. No, that's still not lethal, but it's pretty... pretty deadly. So let's see what they are about to do against our boat. And God's Wedding and Shuddering Light will cover most options here. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, if they're just going to pass the turn, I would assume they have settled the wreckage. Yep, we are going to get that protection from the. Nope, we don't need that right now. Now we're going to make our Cranko huge and we have triple protection on our board. This really nice swinger with the team. Yep, and now we can give two things indestructible and one thing protection from a color so I believe they're dead yeah good game okay so we're done with the gameplay and yeah I, th I think this is a pretty sweet deck maybe I will add another land if I plan to play this deck a bit more but in general I like the concept I like the execution all around a solo deck, I don't think this can compete with uh, tier 1 decks too often. But as you've seen, 
in the Canada game. Uh, well, that was probably one of the shortest games ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it can really hold its own. And I think this is it for the video. If you like the video, like the video. If you want to support the channel, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.